Hey, good morning, friends. This is Sandra Clay. I'm with Cooks United Methodist Church, and um, I'm so glad we could gather uh, together. It's a little sprinkly outside, and so we're inside today. I play, pray that um, the place where you are gathering your thoughts and where you are resting a moment in Him uh, is a peaceful place. Um, we started yesterday uh, thinking about um, uh, those transitions in our lives when one season kind of ebbs into another or flows into another. Uh, and we started with Psalm 37, uh, 4, um, kind of a challenge, uh, almost sounds like a commandment to find our enjoyment in God, to delight ourselves in God, um, and that we would discover the desires of our heart, that God would fulfill those. Um, I, I, that's uh, good advice for those who are graduating from high school, those who are beginning a new study program, those who are moving into the workforce, those who are making any kind of transition in their life. And we're going to continue with um, those uh, admonitions and words of encouragement from God throughout the week. And today, uh, we find ourselves in Psalm 119. Uh, we're particularly going to look at verse 105. Um, this is the longest chapter uh, in uh, the entirety of Scripture. I would also tell you that uh, each one of the Psalms is considered a different chapter, uh, but each one of those is also an individual standalone uh, offering of worship uh, to God. The Psalms were uh, most often songs that were used in worship um, by um, uh, God's people, the, the Israelites. And, um, and they are raw, my friends. Many of them have beautiful uh, expressions of what we hold in our heart, and some of them are just so brutally honest um, that it's almost hard to repeat. Um, it's easy for us to be distracted sometimes that that's the way that person felt, and I would never say that. Uh, and so my prayer is that if you're not very familiar with the Psalms, that you would take um, some time to kind of read through and look through and notice that some of those uh, fellas, some of those sisters writing those words of worship were having some bad days. <laughs> and some were uh, doing exactly what we talked about yesterday, delighting in the word today. Uh, the verse that I've chosen from, again, Psalm 119. Oh, by the way, um, trivia that you'll uh, never need in your entire life, probably, is that if you were to find the centermost point of Scripture uh, coming from both directions, you would find... Um, uh, you would find yourself in the middle of Psalm 119. So it's both the longest, it's also kind of the middle. See, doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but we find ourselves in Psalm 119, uh, and we are challenged by a metaphor that is used throughout Scripture to talk about the Christian path or um, what it's like to follow God, and that is we often need light, but we like the dark because then it doesn't point out the problems that we continue to chase. So uh, my guess is this is also written on your heart. It would sound something like this uh, from the New Living Translation. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Or from the Common English Translation. Your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. I love that promise uh, and the recognition. It's almost as if when I say those words myself, when you say those words uh, your, yourself, um, I can, um, okay, so forgive me, you know how weird I can be. It's almost like Dorothy setting out on the yellow brick road. I believe there's a promise at the end of this, and I'm screwing up my courage to be able to walk in that direction. And if I keep 
if I keep rehearsing this truth, this promise enough, then I can live into the light. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. But if we look a little bit deeper, um, then we understand that the psalmist is saying something a little wider than just what we um, interpret uh, in the English language today. First of all, I would tell you that there is a difference between a lamp and a light by the wording that the psalmist chooses. Um, we, we hear it in a very poetic way, and so often poets uh, repeat um, a notion or an idea with just a slight shift in the wording. Um, to again to kind of layer what it is that we are asking or saying considering or seeing a lamp um, is a light that serves as a guide um, a lamp is very helpful when you're running to the restroom in the middle of the night and you thought the ottoman was there but instead it's right here and it snags your pinky toe. Uh, and so that guide is about this step in this moment for this time, this decision. It's a very specific right where I am. Uh, a light, the word there in the Hebrew really means the dawning or sunlight. I, I'm amazed uh, every chance that I see a sunrise, whether there are clouds in the sky or not, it seems like those first small rays of sunlight, once they break through, begin to illuminate everything. And so now we're thinking about a light that is also big picture stuff. It's not just about where this footstep will be planted, but now I can see things around me that are a little farther away. And both a guide and a big picture are helpful for our pathway, for our journey. So let's think about specifically what it's like to take a walk. We really would like a path that has no obstacle, no snares, there are no slippery slopes, um, we don't have to worry about getting too close to the edge of the path, that there are no dangers uh, that would trip us up or challenge us. We want solid footing all the way. That's not life. I, I, I don't know what your days have been like. But I, I seem to remember a lot of challenges that present themselves as obstacles or snares, um, slippery places, uh, rocky places, and often getting very close to the edge of the path. And so when the psalmist says that there, that there is uh, hope, I find an anchoring, uh, uh, a help. I find something that accompanies me on this sometimes difficult journey. And it happens to be your word, O oh God. Uh, we're going to get there in a minute, I promise. I think it's also important to say that this metaphor of a pathway, a, a, a walkway, how we journey from point A to point B, if we begin to look at that for um, as a picture of how we move through life, how I go from high school to college or to the workforce or to the military uh, or to building a family of my own, whatever these next steps are for you no matter your age no no matter your position in life the challenges that come our way are not always uh, from the outside uh, like we they snuck up on us on the path sometimes our obstacles the snares or the dicey edges that we dance around are our own foolishness our own ignorance, we just don't know what we don't know, uh, and our own willfulness, thinking that we know the path better than we do. 
And so we run ahead or lag behind or try to find a shortcut. Sometimes the making of a path or traveling of a path is our own uh, fault. We, we're the ones who think we know best. And so when the psalmist says that your word both guides my next footstep, but also gives me this um, view of what the pathway or the journey can be like, we, we're saying that your truth, your encouragement, your vision, O oh God, your words of help, are what I need. I, we're in effect saying, my best ideas are nothing compared to yours, O oh God. So when I ask you um, very early on, it's been over a month now that we've been gathering like this. Isn't that crazy? But we've been gathering like this and I've asked you a jillion times now, what are your favorite verses? What are your go-to stories and passages? It's because that's the word that is already illuminating your path. Whether it's a story about forgiveness or promises, um, of uh, no destruction and a plan uh, that has hope for the future. Those are the words that, my friends, you are allowing to illuminate your path. And the reason why um, there are so many places in Psalms and in Proverbs that um, are kind of claiming that promise of God's truth being all that we need to see our way through in this world is because um, no matter what we see, God knows more. And so learning how to lean on that truth, capital T, instead of our truth, a small t, as important as it is, it is still sublimated by what we do not know yet. And so I want to encourage you today to really think about uh, several things. Who invited you or showed you for the very first time how to receive God's truth? Um, what's it been like for you to realize that you've been following a lesser truth and all of a sudden, um, like the light dawns, like the sun rising, and you've seen a bit more of the big picture for your life? in Christ. What's it been like for you um, to know that your truth, capital T now, is not dependent on you figuring everything out, that you'll have the light when you need the light? That may be the scariest part of all, and maybe that's just self-confession today, but often I, I would like to be so prepared that I don't have to bother God um, from uh, from the more important things that God has to do than to show me one more time where to put my foot down or what direction I should be going. But that is God's intent and how God longs to love us, my friends, is to show us the way. On a day here in Wilson County where the skies are kind of gloomy and the light of the sun that usually is so brilliant is um, faded, if present at all, would you be mindful with me um, that God's light is always available to show us where we should put this footstep and also gives us a bit of a view of where the pathway is leading. My young friends who are moving into a new part of your life and uh, believe that you can take on the world, I encourage you and I implore you, don't run ahead of God's light. Allow God to be your constant companion and God will show you where the next step goes. I would love to pray for us this morning. Would you join me? Lord, we are so grateful for the ways that you illuminate our way in this world. That we can't even count the numbers of moments that we feel like the darkness has closed in, that we don't know what direction to go. And that's why we ask for billboards and uh, miraculous signs, Lord. But we ask 
uh, for your courage, for the spirit um, that raised Jesus from the dead to raise a light in our lives, to be what illuminates us enough to stand confidently where we are until we are confident about the next footstep that should be placed as we follow Jesus, as we go into this world that you love so much with gifts and abilities that you've embedded in us. You're trusting us to carry that with us along our pathway. And then you give us the light so that our journey is less difficult. We are so grateful for that. And there are so many ways we run ahead or lag behind or wander off the path. Today, we focus on this sweet promise and your admonition through that psalmist that wrote the song for us. Your word is a lamp for our feet today. And we are grateful to have that knowledge and that confidence and that hope because you are present with us. We give you our thanks today in the name of Jesus who walks with us. Amen. I'm so glad to be with you again and I look forward to the next chance we get to share together. Enjoy the day that God has gifted to you, my friends. See ya.